Welcome back to another episode on Connie Celica, our 1977 Toyota Celica. We're gonna work on a bunch of stuff today, including the fuel system. I'm gonna pop in this fuel pump from AEM Performance Electronics. As a matter of fact, if you wanna win this and one of their wideband controllers, you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned. Look at that little beauty. That is our 340 liter per hour pump. At 40 PSI, that's gonna drop right into the OEM tank of our Celica. Pete's gonna make it drop. Well, in we there. hope it's we, gonna yeah, drop. We're in gonna there, make it. Yeah, we're gonna, we're make, gonna make it, it work. Pete. As I mentioned in the opening, we are gonna give one of these away, as well as this X Series wideband controller. We're not gonna be installing this today, but we wanted to mention it now because it's part of this giveaway package that we're doing with AEM. It's a way of thing, saying thanks to you guys for watching, and uh, we wanna help you go faster, and so does AEM. So, this is their X Series which is the fastest responding wideband on the market. As a matter of fact, I wrote a story about response time and widebands on our website, so go check that out. We'll throw the, a link to that in the description. But the Coles Note version is response time really does matter with widebands. It allows your tuner to do a better job with air fuel mapping. So it, it will deliver better throttle response and maybe even a bit more power. So worth looking into that if you're doing research on widebands. So to win this stuff, you gotta do two things. You've gotta to go to our shop site, speedacademy.shop, and sign up for our new Hot Lap Club. It's basically uh, a newsletter that we're gonna send out once every week or two with updates on content and giveaways like this one. So once you enter or join our Hot Lap Club, your email will go into our database and you'll automatically be entered into the contest to win this. But we also want you to go to AEM Performance Electronics Facebook page and Instagram page and go give them a like to say thank you for kicking down these goodies. By the way, I should have mentioned that this contest is gonna run about a month. We will announce the winner in our Hot Lab Club newsletter. Plus we'll announce the winner in one of our upcoming uh, tune-up videos, which is gonna be like a third video in the week. So yeah, stay tuned for that and we will find you, we'll track you down. I will look for you. I will find you. But if you see that you are the winner, shoot us an email too. You can hit me up at dave at speed.academy or peter at speed.academy. We'll find you, we'll get you your good stuff. Good luck. Peter, install this thing. This is the stock fuel tank out of Connie, which I had refurbished in Toronto at considerable expense. But the inside was kind of rusty looking, so I figured it was worth doing. And now our man Peter, going to show us how to fit up this AEM fuel pump. I thought it was going to be a painful process, but instead, it looks like it, uh, even back in the 70s, they had pumps that were similar size, and the orientation is a very similar style as well, so I should be able to, to make this work here. There's a quick mock-up. Now what I'm going to do is check to make sure that fits and I think it's a little high as you can see it's touching right now and this is kind of how it looks like it's gonna interfere a bit yeah oh, so I need to lower it so we'll do this a couple times get it to the area and spot or the height I should say that it needs to be it's sitting really low down there like we got to get this pump with no clampage. Way up high on that clamp. Yeah, right? which kind of sucks, but hmm. that seems like it's the only way it's gonna go. All right, well. And then even with that, that little cup doesn't bode well for this guy, right? Hmm, that need a smaller sock? Yeah. Or filter? So we may have to go to the parts bin, Excuse me. loot my stash, my hoard stash, because I'm pretty sure I have something that well, may work here, DP. So I went to the parts bin and found this guy. This is a new fuel sock. It's gonna work a little bit better than the AEM one, which when you put it on in the position that we need, kind of uh, creates a little bit of a, mm -hmm. yeah, an interference with it. So this one here, which I think is out of a 240SX, should work perfectly. I think we've resorted to the zip tie mounting method yeah, yet again. Indeed, yeah. But you know what? Zip ties are not a bad idea no. in this instance. Yep. Look at this. They've mounted our pump like a champ. Now, 
the million dollar question is <laughs> our uh our host coming off of here now has to make this crazy bend which i don't think is going to happen yeah so we may uh trim that trim that a back bit. a little bit to make this work yeah. but this is good i like where we're headed with this dp yep you will soon have a very high flowing fuel pump look at that man that fits like a champ i'm not confident that this tube isn't gonna or this rubber piece isn't gonna bend when i put it on but you know what? It's not pinching? It's not pinching all that bad. That's good. I think we've got a decent line there. Yeah, that looks good. So we'll try that. And if it does cause a, a problem here, it doesn't feel like it's it's pinched at all. It just kind of like ovalized a bit. Yeah. But otherwise it's, yeah, uh, yeah. That looks pretty good to me. It's pretty good. Yeah. Thank goodness. I was worried we'd have to uh, start doing some cutting and whatnot, but that works really well. Sweet. Great, great. So what's left here is the wiring. We'll show you that in a sec. But first, tea break. Tea break, yeah. It is time for a tea break, DP. Hmm, <sighs> that is some mighty fine tea. Refreshing. A little ginger peach <sighs> there. It uh, is impeding on our progress, which has been halted here for a second. I'm still working on this, people. I said I, I, I was done, but I'm not. I'm just trying to make sure it's perfect. The OCD is kicking in. Yeah, a little bit. So I'm trying to straighten this out a little bit so that the fuel line fits perfectly. But we'll get there. Actually, you know what? Why don't we cut to me being finished here? Because I, I don't think anybody wants to watch me handle a torch while I drink some tea, right? Here is our completed fuel pump setup. As you can see, the wiring was pretty easy. I ran a power wire up to this isolated grommet for the power, as I said. And for the ground, we went to the unit itself. Uh, AM recommends running a power wire directly to the negative terminal, so I'm not sure uh if that if we're gonna do that i should say um what our plan is because we don't know how isolated this is or not because of all the poor 15 or what was used on here dave i'm not sure what they used when they yeah. did the anyways paint. it's it's paint so what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a negative um wire off of here to the chassis and start with that if the pump works then great if not then we will run a very long wire to the battery terminal well it but. actually won't be that long a wire because the battery's in the trunk now oh you're right gas tank is done fuel is done so we move on to doing do we go back and do the uh, distribution block yeah let's go do the itb whole All vacuum right. setup if you guys followed our s2000 build you know that we used a vibrant vacuum distribution block on the itbs on that car and we're going to do the same here so this is the distribution block itself which Pete whipped up this handy little bracket. It's gonna bolt oh, on yeah. like that. Yeah. It's gonna go to a factory mounting tab underneath the ITB, so it's gonna be out of sight. It's gonna look slick. We've got the, uh, the big barbed fitting for the brake booster. We've got the little barbed fitting for the other end for the map sensor. Of course, we've got our, uh, our nylon hosing and our pneumatic fittings, which will fit into the block. We're all set here. I'm gonna let Pete tackle this I'll go nurse my ailing belly. Maybe stand behind the camera a bit too. Hey partner, come on, you gotta relax. Don't force it, get a blow out your O-ring. Drop a lung. Dave in fact had to peace out. He's feeling a little sick, so I'm left doing this. And it shouldn't be a lot of work here. I'm gonna put these nice little vibrant fittings into here and then put our brake booster fitting right in the middle and then we're going to get to installing this here and here we are distribution block complete as you can see i whipped up this little bracket to mount it i'll show you in a second the uh, welds on the other side aren't uh, so good but no one's going to see it maybe from the other side also always remember to use teflon tape i think uh the Vibrant fittings, these guys here already have Teflon on them, but the other ones 
Make sure to use Teflon just in case. And now we're gonna mount this up. I found a pretty good spot for the, uh, the install on this bad boy. Let me show you. It is going right underneath there. So it'll have a clean look to it and we'll be able to run the, uh, the plastic tubing over into he, these fittings, which is pretty awesome because you don't actually have to drill into the ITB like we did with the S2000. These are already built into the excessive manufacturing uh, ITB plate, adapter plate. All right, that's nice and tight. And it's a bit crooked. <laughs> Go figure. I think we're pretty much straight there. So now we move on to hooking up these plastic tubes that go into the ITBs. So the first one we'd be looking at from a length wise, let's put this in here. And then loop it around. We don't want them too long, but we also don't want them too short. A little volume is never a bad thing, so I'm thinking right there, that should work. Not a clean cut. Dave, you would not approve of this. I'm gonna clean this up for you. I know this car is your baby, so I wanna make sure it's perfect. All right, let's see if I did this right or didn't. Obviously we do not have a hose that we can run right now for the brake booster, which is fine. The option also is we have a map sensor plug, but usually you'd put that in there and then run a map sensor off of it. But because we have this feed line, this vacuum line here, we're gonna take this filter off, but we're gonna run this all the way to the ECU and use it off of here so we don't have to add another line into this. With that complete, I think I'm gonna throw on the actual trumpets here because I actually haven't seen this setup yet. So let's do that. And it'll, well, when do we see Dave tomorrow? He'll be like, oh wow, this looks good. You did a good job, Pete. Or I hope he says that. Let me hear you say, good job. So of course, I wanna do a good deed and I'm missing the bolts. I don't know where they are. Dave's got them in a bag somewhere. So I went to the bin, got what I needed, and I'm just gonna use any random bolt here for now because I really wanna see what these look like. So what do you all think? This is gonna look badass, isn't it? Absolutely badass. I love that filter. Once this motor comes together, we're missing the header. Come on, DP, where's the header? I'm trying to show everybody what beams he's gonna look like here. But man, oh man, he's starting to look good, real good. I think that's a wrap on this episode. I know we teased you with this fuel filter regulator at the end of the previous episode and we didn't get to it this time but it's coming in the next episode. This is part of a, a Siki uh, custom fuel line kit that we'll show you how to complete our fuel system with. So that's coming up next. By the way, if you like this hoodie or this hat, go check out our e-store and be sure to check out our Hot Lab Club as we mentioned in the opening. We've got lots of uh, cool stuff gonna be in there, content updates, giveaways, you name it, it's all gonna be packed in there. We won't invade your inbox too often. No spam people, no spam, just the good stuff. So DP, what do you think of uh, my ITB job? Well, I like what you did with the uh, the whole distribution block under there. It looks great. Yeah, thanks. I'm not so sure about well, your- uh, I couldn't find your bolts. Your tape job on the filter here. <laughs> that uh, prospect? Well, I, I figured it was temporary. I have nuts and bolts in a million bins here. Not your fault, but... Uh...